अंजना श्लाघिया चक्षुरा मिलत अन्येना तस्मे श्री गुरुवे नमः श्री चैतन्य मनोविस्तम स्थापितम येन भूतले स्वयं रूप कथा मय्यम ददाति स्वपदांतिकम वन्दे हम श्री गुरु श्री युतापदगमनम श्री गुरु वैष्णवांश श्री रूपम सागजातम सागना रघुनाथावितम तम सुजीवम साद्वैतम साबदूतम परिजन सहितम कृष्ण चैतन्य देवम श्री राधा कृष्ण पादान सहगना ललिता श्री विशाखा विधांश हे कृष्ण करुणा सिंधु दीन बंधु जगतपते गोपेश गोपिका कांत राधा कांत नमोस्ते तप्त कंचन गौरांगी राधे वृंदावनेश्वरी विश्वानु सुते देवी परमामी हरि प्रिय वांछ कल्पत विवश कृपा सिंधु भई हे वच पतितना पावने बियो वैष्णवे बियो नमो नमः जय श्री कृष्ण चैतन्य प्रभु नित्यानंद श्री अद्वैत गदाधर श्री साधुगुरु भक्तवृंद हरे कृष्ण हरे कृष्ण 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 हरे 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 राम हरे राम 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 हरे 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 कृष्ण प्रभु जी थैंक यू वेरी मच फॉर जॉइनिंग अस please accept our humble obeisances on behalf of everybody on this group who have joined and are about to join prabhuji we are reading the shrimad bhagavatam we are on canto 1 chapter 8 chapter 8 is called the prayers by queen kunti and today prabhuji we are on text 27 so i hand over to you prabhuji and then we can read thank you yeah. namo किंचन विताये निवृते गुणवृत्तये आत्मरामाय शांताय कैवल्या पतये नमः ट्रांसलेशन एंड परपोर्ट वाइज डिवाइन ग्रेस इज भक्ति वेदांत स्वामी श्री प्रभुपाद श्री प्रभुपाद की जय जय माय ओबिसेंसेस आर अनटू यू हु आर द प्रॉपर्टी ऑफ द मटेरियली इंपॉवर्ड You have nothing to do with the actions and reactions of the material modes of nature. You are self-controlled, and therefore you are the most gentle and are master of the monies. Uh, it's a long purport, Madhuri. You can read. Yeah, Hare Krishna. Uh, yeah. There are three verses, uh, three paragraphs in the purport. So I'll read the first one. Uh, Peter Muli Prabhu, will you read the second? And Arya Govind Prabhu, you can read the third. is that okay prabhu yes yes mataji hare krishna okay. hare krishna is that purport by shila prabhupad shila prabhupad ki jai yeah. a living being is finished as soon as there is nothing to possess therefore a living being cannot be in real sense of term a renouncer a living being renounces something for gaining something more valuable a student sacrifices his childish proliquities to make better education a servant gives up his job for a better job similarly a devotee renounces the material world not for nothing but for something tangible in spiritual value shrila rupa goswami sanatan goswami and shrila ragunath das goswami and others gave up their worldly pomp and prosperity for the save sake of service of the lord they were big men in the worldly sense the goswamis were ministers in the government service of bengal and shri raghunath das goswami was a son of a big zamindar of his time but they left everything to gain something superior to what they previously possessed the devotees are generally without material prosperity but they have a very secret treasure house in the lotus feet of the lord there is a nice story about shrila sanatan goswami he had a touch stone that this stone was left in a pile of refuse refuse a needy man took it but later on wondered why the valuable stone was kept in such a neglected place he therefore asked sanatana for the most valuable thing and then he was given the holy name of the lord 
a pinchana means one who has nothing to give materially. A factual devotee or Mahatma does not give anything material to anyone because he has already left all material assets. He can, however, deliver the supreme asset, namely the personality of Godhead, because he is the only property of the factual devotee. The touchstone of Sanatan Goswami, which was thrown in the rubbish, was not the property of the Goswami. Otherwise, it would not have been kept in such a place. This specific example is given for the neophyte devotees just to convince them that material hankering and spiritual advancement go ill together. Unless one is able to see everything as spiritual in relation with Supreme Lord, one must always distinguish between spirit and matter. A spiritual master like Srila Sanatan Goswami, although personally able to see everything as spiritual, set this example for us only because he has no such spiritual vision because we have no such spiritual vision Hare Krishna <coughs> Hare Krishna <coughs> advancement of material vision or material civilization is a great stumbling block for spiritual advancement such material advancement entangles the living being in the bondage of a material body followed by all sorts of material miseries. Such material advancement is called anatta, or things not wanted. Actually, this is so. <clears throat> In the present context of material advancement, one uses lipstick at a cost of 50 cents, and there are so many unwanted things which are all products of the material conception of life. By diverting attention to so many unwanted things, human energy is spoiled without achievements of achievement of spiritual realization. The prime necessity of human life, uh, the prime necessity of human life. The attempt to reach the moon is another example of spoiling energy because even if the moon is reached, the problems of life will not be solved. The devotees of the Lord are called Akinchanas because they have practically no material assets. Such material assets are all products of the three modes of material nature. They foil spiritual energy and thus, the less we possess such products of material nature, the more we have a good chance for spiritual progress. Hare Krishna. The Supreme Personality of Godhead has no direct connection with material activities. <clears throat> All his acts and deeds which are exhibited even in this material world are spiritual and without affection for the modes of material nature. In the Bhagavad Gita, the Lord says that all his acts, even his appearance and disappearance in and out of this material world are transcendental. And one who knows this perfectly shall not take his birth again in this material world, but will go back to Godhead. The material disease is due to hankering after the lording it over material nature. The hankering is due to an interaction of the three modes of nature, and neither the Lord nor the devotees have attachment for such false enjoyment. Therefore, Lord and the devotees are called Nivrutta Guna Vritti. The perfect Nivrutta Guna Vritti he is the Supreme Lord because he never becomes attracted by the modes of material nature, whereas the living beings have such a tendency. <clears throat> Some of them are entrapped by the illusory attraction of material nature. Mataji, shall I continue? Yes, Prabhuji, kindly continue. Because the Lord is the property of the devotees and the devotees are the property of the Lord reciprocally, the devotees are certainly transcendental to the modes of material nature. That is the natural conclusion. Such unalloyed devotees are distinct from the mixed devotees who approach the Lord for mitigation of miseries and poverty or because of inquisitiveness and speculation. The unalloyed devotees and the Lord are transcendentally attached to 
to one another. For others, the Lord has nothing to do, nothing, nothing to reciprocate. And therefore, he is called Atma Rama, self-satisfied. Self-satisfied as he is, he is the master of all monis who seek to merge into the existence of the Lord. Such monis merge within the personal effulgence of the Lord called Brahma Jyoti. But the devotees enter into the transcendental pastimes of the Lord, which are never to be misunderstood as material. Hare Krishna Mat. Thank you. Hare Krishna. Thank you very much, uh, um, Arya Govin Prabhu and Peter Muliku. Prabhu, we hand over to you now. Okay. <clears throat> Krishna. A very beautiful verse. Namo Kinchana Vitaya Nibrati Gunabrittaye Atma Ramaya Shantaya Kaivaya Pataye Nama. One of the most beautiful words, some of the beautiful, most beautiful prayer. If you understand a bit of Sanskrit, Namo Akinchana means those who are impoverished, those who have no material property, you are the, their property. You'll find that there's a general saying that faith in God, they will, what do they call is the opium of the poor, which is true. That those who are poor, their faith in God is much stronger. Nivrati Guna Vritti, he's beyond the three modes. And Atma Ramaya Shantaya, he's self satisfied, peaceful. Kaivala Pate, he's the master of the monists. Let me bow down to you, beautifully explained. Now, <clears throat> you'll find that each prayer of Kuti has a lot of deep meaning. Sri Prabhupada, as I explained earlier, that he gave one lecture for one prayer in a very long explanation. So let's say, let's go to the point Sri Prabhupada is explaining. A living entity is finished when he loses all proper possessions. In this world, if you don't have any possession, you are said to be useless. You find that even in your general daily dealings, if you are, if you are poor, nobody will become your friend. If you are rich or well off, people will come to you. That's why it says that one who has no polar possession is finished, which is true. Chanakya Pandit says that a man without friends has no directions. A wife who loses a husband, the life is finished. And a man who has no knowledge is wasting his life. And a man who has, what do you call it? One who has no possession. For a poor man, the whole world is null and void. This Tanarika Pandit explaining. So anyway, one cannot become, and truly speaking, nobody can become a renouncer. Because everything belongs to Krishna. Krishna is the supreme proprietor. Everything is belonging to Krishna. So to gain something valuable, one has to give up something less valuable. And that is called Akinchana. Akinchana means a devotee gives up things which are obstacles or which are no use in the case of, I mean, in the process of devotional service. Like if you go to Bhagavad Gita, very beautiful words saying the same point. If you go to 259, <clears throat> it says, <clears throat> let me just open the verse. Vishaya Vinay Vinivartante Niharasya Dehina Rasho Arjam Rapi Rasho Abhyasya Param Dishwa Nivartate. Just give me a minute, I give you the, the English translation. It says the senses, sorry. The embodied soul may be restricted from sense enjoyment, though the taste for sense objects remains. But seizing such engagements by experiencing a higher taste is fixed in his consciousness. So if you want to become serious in Krishna consciousness, you will give up all the lower tastes. All the lower tastes, especially related to eating, sleeping, mating, depending. And what cannot give you Krishna consciousness, better give it up. Otherwise, you cannot advance in Krishna consciousness. You know, some examples have been given like that of Raghunath Das Goswami. Now you know that we all know about Raghunath Goswami. He was the only son between two brothers. 
and they were, we can say, fill the rich so much wealth. In one day, they used to earn 500,000 rupees in those days. Imagine what is the value now. And they were collectors for the government and they would earn a lot of money. Anyway, Raghunath, he renounced everything in order to attain the lot of sweet of Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu, getting the mercy of Nityanand Prabhu. And he became so renounced that his father sent when he realized that he is run away, he's living in Jagannath Puri. Uh, he sent some cooks to cook for him. Then he gave, gave up those cooks. Even when the cooks were cooking, he used to now make nice food and give it to the devotees, even to Chitanya Mahaprabhu. Then when Chitanya Mahaprabhu did not like that, he started begging on the staircase of Jagannath Temple. When somebody would come out, they will give him a little prasad, he'll be happy with that. And then even he, that one he gave it up. He started living on the rice. You know, when you boil the rice, it falls out a little when they get boiling. He used to collect those rice. He would clean them and eat them, which are only suitable, maybe for cows or animals, not for human beings. But he would eat that. So this is the renunciation of Raghunath Das Goswami. So much detached. And Another nice story of that of Sanatana Goswami. Sanatana Goswami had a touchstone. Touchstone is a stone you touch any metal, it becomes gold. So there was a Brahmin who knew was in need of wealth. So when he came to Sanatana Goswami, he says, I need some wealth. I want to marry my daughter. And he said, oh, I just threw you a touchstone. He said, where did you throw? He said, it must be in the garbage. So when he looked in the garbage, he found the stone. He became so delighted. He said, with this, I will get millions of rupees. I only wanted a few rupees. In those days, 200 rupees were too much. So anyway, he started going and then something struck his mind. He said, if this has been thrown in the garbage, it means he must, Sanatana Goswami Maharaj, must be having something more expensive than this. So again, he came to Sanatana Goswami. He says, do you have something more expensive than this? He said, yes. He said, but if you want it, he told the Brahmin, you have to throw this stone in the Jamuna. So the Brahmin listened and he went to throw it in the Jamuna far. Again, he came back. He says, now what do you want? Now I can give you the most expensive item. The most expensive item is the Harinam. The Hare Krishna mantra. Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna. Krishna Krishna, Hare Hare. Hari Rama, Hari Rama, Rama Rama, Hari Hari. So in this way, we, know that we should know that the most valuable item is the Mahamantra. Yesterday in our house program, somebody asked, <clears throat> where do we get a verse where the value of the holy name is given? So if you go to the Adi Lila, third chapter, I think verse number 74, it says, if one compares Ashwamed Yagyas uh, to be very great. They are nothing in front of the name of Govinda. That means Ashwamedya Gya can only be performed by an emperor of the earth. Like in Ramayana, Ramachandra performed Ashwamedya Gya, Bali Maharaj performed Ashwamedya Gya, and so on. You have to become an emperor, very, very powerful emperor who can rule the whole world. Only they are authorized to perform Ashwamedya Gya. But still, the value of Ashwamedya Gya is nothing compared to the name of Krishna. And then in the purport, Shri Prabhupada gives three more explanations. They say, if you take a bath at Prayag, Prayag is a city where the three rivers get together, Ganga, Jaguna, Saraswati. It's considered very, very pure. Even if you take bath in that river for one kalpa, it means yugas and yugas, still that purity you'll get is cannot or is not equal to the holy name of Krishna. Then he says that even if you give a mountain of gold, mountain means mountain as big as Meru. Meru is a mountain in Himalaya, very huge mountain. To the Brahmanas in the Kurukshetra on the day of eclipse, still that is not equal to the name of Jodhita. In this way, Prabhupada gives a comparison that 
see how powerful, how valuable the holy name. Most of us don't realize the value. And among, uh, amongst us, those who have been chanting, at least for a considerable number of years, they can understand the value of the holy name. But actually, the holy name is very, very valuable. Especially as you are progressing in devotional service, you'll find that actually you cannot live without using the holy name. It's not that you have to chant your 16 hours. Actually, you be, when you get the taste, you'll be chanting throughout. As far as you are awake, you'll be able to chant Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hare Hare. Hare Rama, Hare Rama, Rama Rama, Hare. Now, who can chant someone who has no attraction for any material position? And that is called Akinchana Vritti. Akinchana means materially impoverished. So, when one becomes materially impoverished, he's got nothing to do, give, nothing material to give, but he has a lot of spiritual items to give. And who gives that is called a Mahatma. In the Bhagavad Gita, there is a verse, I think it's in the ninth chapter. Mahatma Nastu Partha Devim Prakati Ashrita. A Mahatma is one who takes the shelter of the internal importance of Krishna and is always engaged in chanting the glories of holy name, form, pastimes, colleges, abode of Krishna. That is called a Mahatma. So you cannot just call anyone a Mahatma. Mahatma means like Mahatma Vidur. Vidur is called Mahatma. And there are many, many Mahatmas in the Shastras. Those are Mahatmas because they are pure devotees of Krishna. And further it is explained that one is to understand the distinction between matter and spirit in order to understand that everything actually is spiritual. That is called spiritual vision. Because we may think this is matter and this is spirit. But both matter and spirit belong to Krishna. So for a devotee, even a matter or even a spirit, the proprietor is Krishna. Sometimes the non-believers or people who don't believe in deity worship, when they come to temple, you say, oh, look at them. They're worshiping a statue. So especially the Mayavaris, they think that what is the use of worshiping a statue? But if the statue has been authorized, we don't actually use the word statue. We call it a deity. If that deity has been authorized, by a pure devotee, then it is fully worshipable. You cannot worship the same thing if it's there in a shop. But once it has been installed, it's called prana patishta. It is to be worshipped, though it is material. And in the, in the Archan, uh, what do you call, the book of worship, Archan Praditi, it explains that it can be, deity can be made of wood, stone, metal, jewels, the name, painting, or in the mind, eight types of worships. So these eight worships, though they may seem to be material, other than the mind, but even mind is also material, but if it is authorized, it becomes spiritual. So for, for Krishna, everything is spiritual. Prabhupada gives the example of an electrician. That electrician knows that same electricity is used to bring things cool, cool down by when you use a refrigerator. And the same electricity is used in an oven to heat up the item. Energy is the same, but used in a different way. So in the similar way, whether it is matter or it is spirit, originally, or actually, the origin of everything is spirit. And for a devotee, everything is spiritual. So, like, <clears throat> here Sri Prabhupada explains that if you know the distinction between matter and spirit, then you can appreciate that originally everything is spiritual. Krishna says this in Bhagavad Gita, that both the energies, Parashakti and Parashakti, I'm the origin. And Bhaktivinoda Thakur sings in his song, Jada Vidya Kore Bhakti Bhada, that Jada Vidya means material education becomes a huge obstacle in the service in, in understanding spiritual life. And that is what is happening today. Most universities or colleges, they offer you material education, but not spiritual education. And you'll find that those who are materially educated, for them to accept Krishna consciousness or to understand even Bhagavad Gita is be, become very difficult. But those who are spiritually inclined, they can easily understand Bhagavad Gita 
Bhagavatam or the entire Vedic scripture and can become reproduced. That's why he says, Jal Vidya Tore Bhakti Bada. Bada means obstacles. Now you'll find that as the human civilization becomes more materially advanced, then what will follow? Material miseries. More advancement, more miseries. One example I can give. Man created a motor car, but he never thought of traffic jams. Once you get stuck in the traffic jam, then you really curse. I wish I was on foot. <clears throat> we know that sometimes we have to go to the city to do some work in Nairobi. And we may go with the car, but returning, sometimes there's a tra traffic. And we are supposed to be in the temple at a certain time. The best thing is to tell the driver, you come with the car, we just walk. Otherwise, you'll just waste your entire day in the traffic. So it happens that I'm giving the example of a car. Same thing is anything. Of course, Sri Prabhupada doesn't say that material advancement is useless. Whatever material advancement is created, if used in the service of Krishna, then it can foster Krishna consciousness. So anatha actually has to be given. We'll you find that we do some useless things which have no value. <clears throat> Prabhupada gives an example of a lipstick. Lipstick is not expensive, but is there a necessity of putting on a lipstick? No, not necessary. But people waste money like that. Another example is like going to moon. So much money, millions and millions of dollars of taxpayers was used to go to moon. What did they get? Nothing but a few rocks. Rocks, you can even go get it on the earth if they really actually went to moon. But Shabrava says actually they never went to moon. They went elsewhere. Anyway, less possession, more spiritual advancement. You'll find if you leave a simpler life, you'll have more time to chant Hare Krishna, to read, to hear. But if you are too advanced materially, you hardly have any time to practice your spiritual life. And you'll end up becoming a Muda. Muda means just like a very hard working person, leaving no time for spiritual life. So material disease begins by loading over material nature. And what does it do? If you load over material nature, your heart becomes weaker. All the spiritual advancement you're done can go away. I can, if you have a Bhagavad Gita, you can open 15th chapter, last verse. In the last paragraph, I can read for you. Sri Prabhupada explains why performing devotional service in the association of pure devotees in full Krishna consciousness, there are certain things which require to be vanquished altogether. The most important thing one has to surmount is the weakness of the heart. The first fall down is caused by the desire to load it over material nature. Thus, one gives of the transcendental loving service of the Supreme Lord. The second weakness of the heart is that one increases the propensity of loading it over material nature. It becomes attached to matter and the possession of matter. So you should read this section very nicely explained in the verse number 20, the final verse of the 15th chapter. There'll always be weakness in your heart. For example, you have a lot of wealth. There'll be constant worry that my wealth doesn't go, go away. Or let's say you possess something material. If something happens to it, it will bring a shock to you. Very simple example is like, you own a very expensive motor car and it's painted with a metallic color. Imagine someone passes by and he makes a small scratch on it. That scratch will even come on your heart. You become angry. Oh, why you scratch my expensive car? That is one example. But it's, like, it's nothing actually, it's an attachment to something material. And this brings the weakness of the mind. So to give up the weakness of the mind, one must get rid of the weak mind. Like Arjuna is told by Krishna in the second chapter, Kutta storm, where if these impurities come in your heart, give up the petty weakness of your heart, stand up, start fighting. Then we see in order to do our duty, to execute our duty properly, the heart has to be strong, which ultimately becomes strengthened. If you strengthen 
your faith with the association of the devotees. So it says that one should not stay above or not become attracted. Sorry, one should stay above and not become attracted to the three modes of nature. And that is called Nivriti Guna Vritti. Nivriti Guna Vritti means don't be stuck up in the three modes. Simple way to understand this uh, statement is our mind is always, or even us, we are always running with our, behind our mood. If mood is constantly changing, our work cannot bring about good results. That's why in devotional service, a devotee doesn't care for his mood. He does his seva or his service as a duty. And how to overcome the three modes of nature is explained in the 14th chapter of our Gita. That if you overcome, if you want to overcome the three modes of nature, you have to be engaged in devotional service unfailing in all circumstances, whether you're in a good mood, bad mood, worse mood, good place, bad place, with this man, that man, this one, this person. All that should not be considered. You simply engage in your devotional service unstoppingly. Then you can overcome the three modes of nature. And here in this verse, Mother Kunti says that the devotee, sorry, the Lord is the property of the devotees. Krishna actually belongs to devotees, not anyone else. If you go to the ninth canto, in the story of Amarisha, there's one beautiful verse. He says, I do not stay in the heart of my, or in the heart of the yogis, though I am in my spiritual world. But if you really want to find me, I'm in the heart of my devotee. Very, very clear. Devotees are very dear to Krishna. And a devotee is Atma Rama. Atma Rama means self-satisfied, whether he is little or is a little more. Generally, devotee, most devotees don't have any property or wealth. They live a very simple life. And even if they have, they give it away. They give it away. Like in the Pope, the example is given of Rupa Goswami, Sanatana Goswami. When they retired from the government, Rupa Goswami, he got gold coins, which can fill a whole boat. Yet he distributed and kept a little for future in case of emergency. And that was used by Sanatana Goswami to escape from the jail. So in this way, a devotee is not worried about, I mean, not attached to wealth, and he doesn't keep wealth. What he keeps is little, just for in case of emergency. So anyway, it says here, Krishna is the master of the monish. This is the fourth line. Monish means those who want to become one with the Lord. Now you cannot become one with the Lord. You can become one with the Brahma Jyoti of the Lord. That means the effulgence of Krishna. And even they, Krishna is the master of even them. And in other words, Krishna is the master of everyone. So, most monists, they want to merge into Brahma Jyoti. Whereas devotees want to enter into the past times of Krishna. How do you enter the past times of Krishna? It's by hearing Krishna Katha. When you hear Krishna Katha, then the effect of Krishna Katha is you will feel the presence of Krishna. You will enjoy being in the pastime of Krishna. Just like if you go to the fourth chapter of Bhagavad Gita, <clears throat> in the beginning, Krishna tells Arjuna, I gave this yoga first to Vivashwan. Then Vivashwan gave it to Manu Manu, gave it to Ikshaku, and later on the knowledge is forgotten. And Arjuna raises a question, how am I to believe? Because you and me are the same contemporary, same age. How am I to believe you gave this knowledge to the sun god? And Krishna replies, that many, many births you have taken, many birthday births, births I have taken. I remember all of them. You don't remember any one of them. And the purpose Sri Prabhupada says, this is the difference between the Lord and a living entity. Of course, Krishna Arjun is not an ordinary living entity. And the Prabhupada Shri Prabhupada explains that even while Krishna was preaching to the sun god, Arjuna was also there. 
So he makes it very clear that Arjun is an associate of Krishna. And whenever Krishna comes, he comes with Arjun. Maybe Arjun may accept some different role. Like in Krishna's pastimes, he's Arjun. Then when Chaitanya Mahaprabhu came, Arjun became Raman and Rai, or sometimes Vishaka. In this way, he's a constant companion of Krishna. So how can it be new? So Sri Baba says that when Krishna gave him the reminder, he could remember, yes, millions of years ago, years ago I had read or I had heard Bhagavad Gita directly from the mouth of Krishna. So what do we learn from this verse? Even if you have wealth, try to live a simple life. And the wealth should be used in the service of Krishna, not otherwise. If you go to the 11th chapter, I think it's the final verse. Can somebody read the verse? If someone has a Bhagavad Gita, anybody likes to read? Nobody has a Bhagavad Gita in hand. Let me read it then. 11.55, beautiful verse. It's considered to, yeah, somebody has a book they can read. Anybody likes to? Uh, Hare Krishna Prabhuji. Yeah, 11.55. Yeah, <clears throat> we supposed to read the translation? Yes. My dear Arjuna, he who engaged in my pure devotional service <clears throat> from the contaminations of a fruitive activities and mental speculations, he who works for me, who makes me the supreme goal of his life, and who is friendly to every living beings, he constant, uh, certainly comes to me. Yes. She says, one who is engaged in my pure devotional service, free from all contamination of fruitive activities or previous activities, and free from mental speculation, who is friendly to every living entity, certainly comes to me. So in other words, this verse is considered to be the essence of the entire Bhagavad Gita. The whole Bhagavad Gita is in this verse. Essence. Essence means the taste of the Bhagavad Gita. So he says, first of all, who is engaged in pure devotional service? Who is engaged in the pure devotional service? What is the symptom? The symptom of a person engaged in pure devotional service is, is constantly chanting, Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hare Hare. And that devotional service is free from fruitive activities. Fruitive activities means he doesn't do for asking something for Krishna. And he's free from mental speculation. He's already crossed it. And then lastly, he says, he works for me and he's friendly to every living entity. Certainly, he comes to me. So this verse is very beautiful. If you study, you know, the Sanskrit is so good. Mat karma krin, mat karma. Mat bhakta sangha varjitta nirvarai sharva bhutishu yasa maam edhi pandavas. And if you go to the purport, it says one should do Krishna karma. The Krishna karma will keep you pure. For example, you are in business. You should transform that activity into Krishna consciousness. If you are a pro proprietor of the business, the profit should be used for Krishna. Then if you are constructing a big building, then you should all also make a temple for Krishna, where a deity can be installed and an arrangement for service of the deity should be done. So this way, even if you have wealth, it can be used in the service of Krishna. And if you don't have wealth, you're already qualified because you'll have plenty of time to serve Krishna. You'll find that in the difficult times, it's more easier to remember Krishna rather than in happier times. So this is the essence of this particular verse. Uh, that, first of all, one is free from what he called. Uh, let me read the verse again. That's verse number 27. King Chana, Namo, uh, sorry. Namo kinchana vittaji, one who is materially impoverished, nivrita guna vritti, who is above the three modes of nature, atma ramaya shantaya, 
art, for, sorry, I forgot to explain Atmara. Um, Atmara means he's always satisfied. Only two people can become fully satisfied. One is Krishna and one is the pure devotion. Krishna is ever satisfied. He plays his flute and he enjoys. Devotee <clears throat> is always engaged in devotional service and he's in choice. So this is the common thing between at, one Atmaram and another Atmaram. And then Kaivala Pathya Namaha. That is the Lord or the Master or even the Bodhis. So at least four features are explained in this particular verse. So time is up. Hare Krishna. If you have any questions, you can ask. Krishna, thank you very much, uh, Roji, for the explanation in making this verse very interesting. Roji, I just wanted a clarification. So when they say Mahatma, and yes. we, we are talking of the Acharyas um, or Mahatma Vidur, but even Gandhiji was called Mahatma. Was he a, a, a Mahatma in real sense or... Yes, very good question. Prabhupada comments in the lecture that Mahatma Gandhi is not actually Mahatma. <laughs> but he's called Mahatma because he brought freedom uh, by the non-violence movement. Prabhupada says no. Mahatma means, if you go to, uh, let me give the verse, I think it's the ninth chapter. Mahatma Nastu Parsa Devi Prakati. Let me look for the verse and I'll read for you. I think it's 9, 20, 20 something. Just a minute. Eh? Nine thirty. So if you go to 9, 13, then it explains to you who is a Mahatma. I'll read, read for you. Mahatma Nasu Patha Devi Prakati Mashuta Bhajanti Anayo Manasu Gnatva Bhutadam Abhyam O son of Pitta. Those who are not deluded, the great souls, are under the protection of the divine nature. They are fully engaged in devotional service because they know me as the Supreme Personality of Godhead. Now if you go to the first line, it says, uh, second line, the first sign of Mahatma is that he is already situated in the divine nature. He is not under the control of material nature. So this was explains that you cannot just stamp anyone and call him a Mahatma. Mahatma means one who is engaged in, engaging in, in his all his time in glorification of Krishna's name, form, pastimes and so on. That is a Mahatma. If you meet him, he's always glorifying Krishna. That's it. That is a Mahatma. Thank you for okay. the clarification. Yeah. Uh, Prabhuji, uh, Mahatma Gandhi was very uh, conversant with the Bhagavad Gita, but uh, now I've understood the explanation. Not only conversant, but he had his own interpretation of Bhagavad Gita. He's not teaching Bhagavad Gita as it is. Oh, okay. He's teaching on the basis of non violence now, Bhagavad Gita, even if you see the cover of Bhagavad Gita, it shows you violence. Yeah, yeah. So Prabhupada says that he had his own way of preaching Bhagavad Gita. And many people do their own way of interpreting. Mm -hmm. That's why why people became devotees or become devotees after reading Bhagavad Gita as it is, the mm -hmm. commentary by Sri Prabhupada, is that that is the actual Bhagavad Gita. That's why our Bhagavad Gita is called Bhagavad Gita as it is. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So we should not take commentaries of others, especially those who are not in this situation, never read. It will not do any good to you, rather it will spoil everything. Okay. It's okay? Okay, thank you. On this much. point, I'll give you one uh, explanation. Once Mahatma Gandhi was asked that you are saying non-violent, what happens if your daughter is attacked or someone tries to molest her? He said, I'll not do anything. Then the man said, you are a fool. And another explanation is that Mahatma Gandhi had to work for 30 years to get freedom from India. But real independence was brought by 
boss. What was the name? Jagdish Chandra Bosch. Was it? What was it? Sorry, Subhash. Subhash, Subhash Chandra Bosch. In just a short time, the independence had to come. The Subhash Chandra Bosch, wait, what did he do? He created an army of his own to fight the British. So Shiprapat says, when violence is necessary, use violence. Yeah. So because of Subhash Chandra Bosch, the independence came, not because of Mahatma Gandhi, but because he worked very hard. People say he's the one who brought freedom. Uh -huh. okay. Okay? okay? Okay. Thank you very much. Is there uh -huh. another question or comment? <clears throat> Hare Krishna Prabhuji, thank you very much for your nice class. And this is also a very nice verse. Uh, Prabhuji, it is Akinsana Vittaya. Uh, it is written here, who are the property of the material improvised. It means they have no material positions. Uh, Krishna is the head or he is the property of the all the, like the poor people. But sometimes we saw many kings like Abrish Maharaj, Janak Maharaj, there are big, big sages and they are the devotee. Then uh, here one time telling Akinchana, but they are the king, there are so much opponents, but they are the very devotee. They, what is the wealth of devotees? If you go to which was this? Nine, nine, uh, nine twenty-two. Bhagavad Gita says, uh, "Ananya chinta yanto mam ye jana pari paashate uh, tesham nitya bi yuktanam yukshiva vahamiham." That I protect, I, I fulfill the needs of my devotee, and I protect whatever my devotee says. Now, if I ask you a question, what is the property of of a devotee? Two things. Krishna and devotional service. And that mm -hmm. is called Akinchana. Devotee is called Akinchana because his possession is Krishna. And his other possession is service to Krishna. And that what Krishna protects. So even when you say big, big things like Abrish, he had a lot of wealth, but he used the wealth as the as we can say a blessing of Krishna and use it in the service of Krishna. So it's not nothing wrong in becoming rich, but you use that wealth in the service of Krishna. Uh, Mataji is asking question. Urmila Mataji. No, no, Prabhuji, we do believe that we shouldn't be greedy in all these things. Mm. And uh, like, uh, like Swamis and all, we should do more. Uh, we should be more towards Krishna, pray more and uh, get more devoted and all. But uh, then uh, how can we survive in our uh, time? They were all in the past. They couldn't live a simple life. We can't live a completely simple life. We need proper bed. We need proper food. That is true. Because now the Vanashram system is not there. When in India, Russia, Vanashtam system was there, one can live a very simple life and one will be provided. It's like a sannyasi, he would be given everything. A brahmana will be given arms, he can survive. Yet they chose to live a very, very simple life. So, in the present times, yes, you need some wealth, you need some possessions. Even in this country, it has been realized that it's not easy to live without money. So you have to have some balance so that if things go wrong, you can use that money. That's why the example of Rupa Goswami is given. When he got all the wealth, 50% he gave it to the Brahmanas. The, the other half which was left, uh, that quarter it means was given to his relatives. Otherwise the relatives asked that, would ask, you didn't give us anything. So he gave it. And one quarter which was left was kept for future. So Rupa Goswami is teaching us that if you have wealth, one quarter is for you. The rest should be given up for Krishna. And Prabhupada even says that if you are earning, then the 50% of the wealth should be used to propagate Krishna consciousness. Is that okay, Mataji? Yeah. Right. And there, there are so many Mahatmas in India. People call anybody Mahatma. Yeah, that's where Prabhupada says you can't just call anyone Mahatma. You cannot rubber stamp a Mahatma. Mahatma is there written in the Bhagavad Gita. Who is a Mahatma? That's why I quoted this verse of uh, what he called Bhagavad Gita. Mahatma Nastu Partha Devim Prakriti Ashita. One who is living 
under the control of the internal potency of the Lord, that is a Mahatma. Not anyone can be called Mahatma. This is if someone is rich, they may call him a Mahatma. You can't call him a Mahatma. If someone is a big politician, they may call him Mahatma if he does some good activities. But that is not Mahatma. Real meaning of Mahatma means he, he does not waste time. He uses his time to glorify Krishna. That is called Mahatma. Okay. Yeah, but uh, Gandhiji was wearing uh, very little clothes, just a little dhoti, because in his country people uh, didn't have proper food and proper cloth. Is it that he is called Mahatma because of that? Because he no, no. people gave away his Mahatma. things. He, he lived a very a simple life. People gave a reason that he fought for India, and he brought about freedom. And I, I also explained to you who actually brought freedom to India. So first of all, you have to understand. By wearing a coffin, even the six Goswamis used to wear a coffin, simple coffin, but they were engaged in devotional service. So are the six Goswamis Mahatmas or is Mahatma Gandhi a Mahatma? You judge. Yeah, I got it, yeah. yeah. Mahatma Gandhi was... If you can live like the six Goswamis, you are Mahatma. Yeah. It's not that you got freedom. Yeah. So the, we have to understand what Sri Prabhupada is explaining. Yeah. Because he used a, a tool of non-violence to drive away the bridge. They, he even said, if they beat me still, I will tolerate it. But for how long will you tolerate? 30 years went by. Wasted. That's why I gave the example of Subhash Shadar Bosch. In a very short time, he brought about freedom, freedom to India. Because then the British understood that these people have taken weapons. And they became... Chandra Mose wanted to fight uh, uh, and get uh, independence, isn't it? Yes, and he's the one who brought independence. He started in Singapore something, his movement. Yeah, he had to go outside India. Anyway. Yes. Yeah. He prepared his army and attacked the British. Small yeah, because army. they are going to have a statue in Singapore now. Mm. Shukas Chandra Bose's statue will be there in Singapore. Anyway, yeah. Okay, any other question? Anybody else? Hare Krishna Prabhu. Hare Krishna, Peter. Uh, please, can you run the eight types of material that can be used for the deities? Okay. One well, is stone, metal, wood, sand, jewels, uh, paint, and uh, clay, mud, and then the mind. You can even install a deity in the mind and worship it. Acceptable. Thank you. Okay. And also, is it okay if you sometimes you can chant the holy names of Nityananda and Gauranga? Yes. In fact, before chanting, we should chant their names. We always chant their names by saying Shri Krishna Chitani Prabhu Nityananda, Sri Advaita Gadada Sutra. And Prabhupada says, if you can't chant like that, if you find it's difficult, just say Gauranita and start chanting. Right. Even when you're feeling down, you should loudly say Gauranita. In fact, his holiness, uh, Jai Padaka Maharaj explains very nicely. He, he says, uh, people who don't know the name, he says, you touch your knee and touch your thigh. Knee, thigh. You understand the meaning? You touch your knee and you touch your thigh. Knee, thigh. That is the thigh. And then go, run, go. Go, ranga. This is Jai Padaka Maharaj's explanation. It's okay? Thank you, Prabhu. Yes, Prabhu. Okay. Thank you. Okay. Okay. If there is no one, we can end up the class. Hare Krishna, Path Prabhuji, kindly, kindly take over. Yes, Hare Krishna. Thank you. Thank you very much, Prabhuji, for the nice class. Uh, I request uh, all the devotees, please unmute yourself and chant Hare Krishna Mantra for glorification of His Grace Rukma Prabhuji. 
प्लीज ज्वाइन हरे कृष्णा हरे कृष्णा हरे 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 राम हरे प्रभुपाद की जय रुक्मा प्रभु की जय हरे बोल हरे कृष्ण हरे कृष्ण